Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Fresh Crits of Melbourne. We're back. Crits are back. We're down at Caulfield Carnegie Cycling Club, down at the church, Glenvale Circuit, um, for the first crit of the season. Blue skies in Melbourne. Things are looking absolutely glorious. And this is a field that you might not have seen before because this, ladies and gentlemen, is A grade. And before anyone gets too excited, um, my off-season hasn't been that impressive. We've actually been able to get in touch with an absolute hitter, Jensen Plowright, um, World Tour professional, where we have been fortunate enough to strap a GoPro to his bike and watch him just rip apart the field. And already you can see we're five minutes into this race, not even. He's launched an absolute mammoth attack, 800 watts, over 30 seconds straight in. And the entire peloton has been decimated, completely strung out. And talking about things that are going to be decimated, it's going to be YouTube servers once this video gets released. And uh, the most important thing you guys can do is hit that subscribe button as it's going to help me grow the channel and get more and more of these videos out for you guys to watch. So without further ado, let's get stuck into some footage. Okay, so we're picking this up uh, only a few minutes later and Jensen's uh, straight from the gun attacked and he's found himself in a break with three riders here. So I asked myself, what is the opposite of nose breathing? And I'd probably say it's exactly what we've got Dylan Parker doing here right now. Tongue out, trying, gasping for air, just trying to hang the wheel of the big plowman. And joined with him is Ryan Mosby, and we've seen him before on the uh, the crits down at Hawthorne at the teardrop, where he fully stitched me up and I end up burying myself and then soon getting dropped. So there's a nice little three-man group working, but you can already see Ryland's starting to skip a few turns, and that's a sign of a very seasoned professional. He knows what his limit is. He knows where he can, can contribute. But in the background, there's one rider who's making a miraculous attempt to get across. And the question you have to ask yourself in these sorts of situations as that rider is how deep do you go to try to bridge across to a group that's only been off the front since the gun? Is it worth burning a match to this knowing that right behind you, you've got an entire animated peloton that are not going to want this one to get away? So we'll skip ahead to see how that one turns out for him. Well, as you might have guessed, unfortunately, it does not take long for the group to finally catch up. And when this sort of thing's happened, bang, you've got to be right and ready for the uh, for the next counterattack. And you can see there's been a whole bunch of riders be launched off the front. And there's not some nobodies in there. There are some really strong looking riders. Unfortunately, you see me there on the right. I'm not one of them. I'm fresh sits today. Um, just taking it easy, wanting to make my way around this course. So there you see Sherwin just going for another attack. So there is now about four or five riders off the front. Jensen obviously can't do much. He's buried himself and burnt to match in that last attack. But what he does really well, he doesn't let himself drift too far back into the, into the bunch. He keeps himself right up close and personal, right at the front of the race. So he's able to na uh, navigate through any sort of attacks that do get thrown his way. So right now on the on his rear wheel in that on the new wind space bike, we've just passed Kerry. We've got Mark Langlands um, from New Zealand, absolutely tearing it up right at the front of the race in perfect position as well. The plow has a short attention span because he gets pretty bored sitting in the bunch uh, after one and a half minutes and launches a, a huge effort to bridge a crop across to the group in front, which he identifies as a threat. He's happy once he gets uh, into that group, he's happy to then jump off the gas knowing that he's neutralized the attack up the road, which has put him in a great position and then uh, puts it back on the peloton to shut the gap and to chase him. So effectively puts in a short effort there to, uh, to, to bridge across and then allows the rest of the group to do the rest of the work to jump back on. Okay, as we tick into 32 minutes into the race and there's been a group of riders up the road. TJ's one of them, Aiden Butterjeg's one of them and also this man here who gives, who's in a world of hurt, let's be honest. And I think we've all been there. We know how exactly how he feels. Brendan Green, absolutely cooked. He's been in the mix trying to fight it out. Now the group's been caught. Now, as whenever there's like a, uh, a break up the road and it's just been caught, you've got to watch out for the counter and... And Jensen throws the first punch, as you would probably expect. Burns another match. Um, does it at an, inter an interesting spot? Because you're coming into this uh, left-hand corner here. Um, you're going to have to jump off the gas a little bit to take that corner. But always in the right moves is Mosby. 
obviously identified that there's a threat here and jumped across and he's doing it at the right spot because he is in amazing company. We've got Cyrus Monk here who's raced over in Europe and, uh, and tears it apart in Australian cycling. He's an absolute weapon and someone to look out for. Uh, behind him, we've got someone who probably doesn't need an introduction, to be honest, Mark O'Brien, who's been um, just a hero for Australian cycling, really. He's been there for ages. Ryan Mosby, and then lastly, a Conti rider here from South Africa who is um, always up at the top. So... If there's any break to be in, this is probably the one. So uh, let's skip ahead a little bit further. Let's see how it all plays out for the boys. So the four of them have been out there for only a couple of minutes and the Peloton has realized how much of a threat this break is. And um, there's a few riders that have gone to the front and tried to uh, to shut it down. Um, you can already see that uh, there's a couple of riders in the mix that are starting to or stopping rather, pulling turns, and that just disrupts the uh, the, the pace line of the group, um, and things have already come back together. So it didn't take that long. Um, the, it looks like Aiden identified there was a threat. They sent a couple of riders to the front, chased it back down, and now the entire group is back together, and um, riding is one. So look, I'm going to skip ahead uh, to the back end of this race now, where things heat up once again. So um, we'll pick it up from there. We're going to pick this one up with just under 5Ks to go. And there's a bit of a threatening break up the road with a couple of really, really strong riders. Uh, the Plowman identifies this as a threat and launches a huge attack, dipping over 1,300 watts. Forbes is in the perfect opportunity. He grits the teeth and goes with. You can see Alex Edney shot out the back door, a shake of his head. He is done. Speedy's there as well. He's been in the break for most of the day in lots and lots of moves. Forbes is now really struggling to hold the wheel. And to be honest, I don't blame him. It's been uh, 26 seconds, this attack, at 834 watts. And after 56 minutes of racing, the legs must be burning. Forbes, he looks over his shoulder and he obviously identifies that there is a gap, which is really, really good for the boys. By this time, they have joined the group in front of them. Um, uh, Gustav's in the mix. There he is there. He's a pro Conti rider. We've got Matt Darby. I think he might be an ex-rower. As well as an inform rider who I'm not exactly sure who it is. We've just crossed the start finish line. Another lap is gone. We've got Ryland trying to drag the entire group back as finally everything comes back together. Big deep breaths as we prepare ourselves with 4K left. A lot of action are coming here, guys. So make sure you stay tuned and hit that like button and subscribe. With the group now entirely back together, we've got Aiden Butterjig launching a massive attack. We've got Marco here on the right-hand side, an informed rider. He identifies that threat, and he goes with it. Forbes is gritting his teeth just to try to hang on to the wheel. And now we've got in the grey informed kick, Alex Smythe, who is an absolute powerhouse and someone that you do not want to have to fight a wheel with. You, we, uh, I'll show you a little bit of footage later on about how that works out for a couple of riders. Jensen obviously identifies that that's a threat, so he launches another attack uh, only a couple of uh, 30 seconds earlier, goes to try to get across to that Marco and Aiden, Aiden group that is now up the road. He's put in another huge repeat effort to get across to that group that's up the road, and he has left daylight between him and the peloton below. As you can see, Gustav swing off the front here, he's trying to make a huge effort because he was identified that this is a very threatening group with only 3Ks to go. Here we have Marco here putting in another massive effort to hold the wheel. And we've got Aiden right now ripping a massive turn on the front, trying to keep the pace nice and high at over 50 kilometers an hour. It is absolutely on here with uh, 2.7Ks left. But it does not take too long for Gustav to identify that this is a massive threat. And he has single-handedly on his own brought the whole group back. What a huge effort. Now, what surprises me here is that random inform guy who I don't know his name is actually doing turns, was helping bridge the group across, even though we got Marco in the mix below. I'm not too sure what the thoughts are there, but it'll be interesting to hear from him later on if he uh, pipes up in the comments. The group has been brought entirely back together now. It's back to where we started. We've got Alex Smythe doing what he can, doing what he does best, rather, in holding Jensen's wheel. He doesn't want to let that go at all. You can see there's a lot of argy-bargy. He's like, yeah, don't, don't even think about coming across here, mate. That's my wheel, is what he's saying. As we cross the start-finish line in a moment, that there, you can hear the bell here. That's uh, one lap to go, ladies and gentlemen. There it goes. 
it is now on. There is nothing to be left on the table here. And Jensen's got himself in around, in the, around the top 10 position, definitely, as we're coming into the uh, to the next corner here. The pace is still really quite high, 47 kilometers an hour. No one's letting anything up. All the guys are thinking is trying to hold a nice wheel, try not to do any extra effort, try not to surge too much, just try to keep it nice and even and save everything you possibly can for the upcoming sprint in two corners. Marco's done enough to keep the pace high. He's fallen off the back. It is now an absolute fight for Jensen's wheel, but to be honest, do not even think about coming across Alex. He says, get out of here, son, as he just pushes him straight over. It is absolutely on a huge fight for Jensen's wheel. There's only a few riders in front of him now. As we come into the final straight, as we round the corner, it is absolutely on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jensen launches sub-atomic levels of power as he splits the group apart, launches to the finish line. We've got Gustav Trump pushing really, really hard. Jensen posts up, takes the win. That's the race, ladies and gentlemen. It is all over. Jensen takes first and puts on an absolute clinic. Look, it was an absolute pleasure to watch this. Thank you for listening. If you do like this sort of stuff, please hit that like button. And most important, that you subscribe to the channel. More the merrier. If you send this, if you like this stuff, send it to your mates. If you see yourself, comment below. And I'm going to see you next week. Thank you very much. Ciao.